billion trillion million billion trillions of orbiting snowballs orbiting snowballs orbiting snowballs a flat fact a flat fact the realm do you know what the realm is a story we agree to tell each other over and over till we forget that it's a lie what you were taught in school is just a version of reality. It may not be the only version, or the best version, or the most accurate version. Professor Christopher Nioges. Greetings ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. I think this quote by Professor Nioges is most appropriate for the story of the Lamb of Tartaria. We all know that things can get lost in translation over time, and from language to language. The Lamb of Tartaria, a real thing, that somehow, over time, led to it becoming a myth, with what I find to be the most bizarre description. I also have some interesting link-ups between the presumed mythological Lamb of Tartaria, the Scotsmen, the ancient Hebrews, the Indians, the Indians from India, and the Indians from South Amorica. So what is the Lamb of Tartaria? And my question, could the sacrificial lamb in the Old Testament be, in fact, this Lamb of Tartaria, and it is described metaphorically, as Jesus Christ is also described metaphorically as a sacrificial Lamb of God. First, I will read a description said to be authored by Henry Lee. It's an excerpt from a book written in 1851. In a place called Scythia, in the land of Tartaria, it was said to grow a tree of miraculous form. There groweth a sort of fruit, as if it were gourds, and when it is ripe, men cut it asunder, and they find therein a beast, as if it were of flesh, blood, and bone, as if it were a little lamb with wool, and men eat the beast, and fruit also, and sure, it seemeth very strange. This story was later embellished, and had the beast, the lamb, linked to the plant by an umbilical stem, so that it could browse on nearby vegetation, and when all the vegetation around the lamb plant was consumed, the lamb died. The story is often supported by the assertion that the Baromets was a Tartar word, meaning lamb. Henry Lee quotes from another source, a French book of about 1357, which is purported to be the recollections of travel stories from classic and medieval times of that English knight, Sir John Mandeville. Though the official narrative of today declares that the work of Sir John Mandeville was actually a compilation of stories put together by a Benedictine monk, and it is assumed that this monk never travelled further than his monastery's library. The source Henry Lee quotes from has a very long title, The Voyages and Travels of Sir John Mandeville Knight, wherein is set down the way to the Holy Land, and to Jerusalem, and also to the lands of the Great Khan, and of Prester John to India, and diverse other countries, together with many and strange marvels therein. I don't think he would get a book with that long title published today. For many centuries, the Lamb of Tartaria was considered to be a myth, and depending on which official historical document you read, some say it is still a myth. The Lamb of Tartaria was considered a mythological zoophyte, that is a plant that is half animal and half plant, or plant-like animal. Other historic accounts document that this legendary plant was introduced to England by the knight Sir John Mandeville in the 1300s, and a specimen of this legendary zoophyte is said to be found at Lambeth Castle in Britain. This castle is still in existence to this day and still bears the name Lambeth Palace. The specimen held at Lambeth Castle was an upside down fern, which was either a mistaken attempt to identify the sheep plant or an outright fraud. The specimen at the castle is Cybotium baromets, the golden chicken fern or woolly fern. It is a species of tree fern native to parts of China and to the western part of the Malay Peninsula. The fern's woolly rhizome was thought to be the inspiration for the mythical vegetable lamb of Tartaria. 
There is mention of a similarly described plant animal in Jewish folklore as early as 436 CE. This creature called the Jedua, J-E-D-U-A-H, an alternate name for the Baramets, was like a lamb in form and sprouted from the earth connected to a stem, and those who went hunting the Jedua could only harvest the creature by severing it from its stem with arrows or darts. Once the animal was severed, it died and its bones could be used in divination and prophetic ceremonies. Are plants bones used in divination and prophetic ceremonies? This is a grossly misunderstood translation of the text at one time. It is a plant. Plants can be analysed now to determine and discover things. Our medicines come from plants. In a portion of the Talmud, in the Mishnah Kilayim, there are creatures called the Adna Hasti which literally means lords of the fields, and they are regarded as beasts. Two classical authors also seem to describe the exact same plant. Herodotus, certain trees bear for their fruit fleeces surpassing those of sheep in beauty and excellence. And Pliny, these trees bear gourds the size of a quince, which burst when ripe and display balls of wool out of which the inhabitants make cloths like valuable linen. So with the lamb of Tartary, one could make a fine cloth. So here now is where we find our famous link to the Scottish. The Scottish tartan. So let's have a look at the etymology of the word tartan. I'll put it on screen as there are numerous spellings which also may aid to further research on Tartaria. Tartan, noun. The spelling is likely influenced in Middle English by Tartarian, rich silk cloth, mid-14th century. From Old French Tartarian, Tartar cloth. From Tartar, Tartar, the Central Asian people, see Tartar. A kind of woolen fabric, mid-15th century, perhaps from Middle French Tartane, strong coarse fabric, mid-13th century. From Old French Tourette, kind of cloth, from Tyre. Silk cloth from medieval Latin Tyrius. Cloth from Tyre. See Tyrian. Wikipedia says the English word tartan is most likely derived from the French tartarin, meaning tartar cloth. It has also been suggested that tartan may be derived from modern Gaelic tarsane, meaning a cross. Today, tartan usually refers to coloured patterns. Though originally a tartan did not have to be made up of any pattern at all. Today we still call the product from the lamb of Tartary wool. Cotton wool from the cotton plant, an annual growing herb belonging to the genius Gossypium of the Malvasia family or the Mallow family. Cotton seeds contain oils that are a valuable source of protein. Cotton. And where can we find the first evidence of cotton use? Scientists searching caves in Mexico found bits of cotton balls and pieces of cotton cloth, which means that it was woven, that proved to be at least 7,000 years old. They also found that the cotton itself was much like that that is grown in America today. In the Indus River Valley in Pakistan, cotton was being grown, spun and woven into cloth 3,000 years BC. At about the same time, natives of Egypt's Nile Valley were making and wearing cotton clothing. When Columbus discovered America in 1492, he found cotton growing in the Bahama Islands. By 1500, cotton was known generally throughout the world. Cotton seeds are believed to have been planted in Florida in 1556 and in Virginia in 1607. There is evidence being found of the links between the Indian and the Mayan culture. I have a short clip which explains a brief introduction that leads to this link between the Mayan culture and the Indians. Andreas Zertus recently had Professor Christopher Niurgis as his guest. This is a snippet of the conversation. The entire interview is well worth viewing. Seminars, and we would talk about a couple of these cultures and uh, the similarities to previous cultures, like where did the Mayan come from? You know, most people say they came from the Olmec, but there's a lot of evidence that the Mayan people, they, the flowering of the culture came right out of India. 
and the, uh, the the temple building culture in India, which would have been like a on boats, almost a year journey to get over to Central South America, not South America, Central America. Yeah, Mayan and India. <clears throat> the similarities are just totally profound of India and uh, Mayan culture. Kind of interesting, huh? Absolutely. I didn't even know you could, I didn't even know that's online because this is a very unorthodox version that the Mayans came from India and, you know, like the, 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 um, the resemblances, and it's not just one or two things. The resemblances are like hundreds of resemblances in terms of the clothing, the postures of the, 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 the people in the inscriptions and on and on and on and on. I, I mean, there's like a lot of text. I read textbooks about this. I never saw these pictures, but some of the images are just shockingly similar. Here's my favorite is this picture from Egypt and this picture from Ecuador. Yeah, I've never seen that one either. No, there's so better funny. ones even I think actually I should look for. But what's funny is they found this in a place called the Land of Giants above uh, 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 Banios in Ecuador. And there are tons of examples of it. Here's another, here's one really great. Ecuador, Mesopotamia. Check out that. Yeah, okay, so that's Crespi. <laughs> the Crespi collection, the archeologists, the traditional archeologists don't know what to think about Crespi and they just say it's all fraud. But well, no, the, now we know, because I just was in uh, Ecuador about two years ago. Um, and the, in the North, east in ecuador there is a place this forest called land of giants and google has laser proven it's there and then you know this is where all the stuff's been coming out that they were trying to hide for a while but there yeah. are tons of it and it's yeah it's definitely not fake it's it, it, i've i saw some of it so the, <laughs> so the whole point the whole point to me really is that what you're taught in school is just a version of reality and it may not be the only version or the best version or the most accurate version. There is evidence of a worldwide flood, evidenced by the fact that archaeologists have been digging the remains from underneath meters of dirt since at least the 19th century, and in some places there is still more underneath those layers. We have the oldest known evidence of cotton, the limb of Tartaria, woven into a cloth found in Mexico. The limb of Tartaria is not a myth, it is an example of a very misinterpreted, translated text at some time in the past. Just what were those skins that Adam and Eve were given to wear? The skins of a sheep or the skin of the Lamb of Tartary? Just a thought. That's all for today, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for listening.